getting to Ufa, Russia might have been the most interesting experience I've ever had. So we were going to fly out of St. Louis, and Coach Smith, Coach Maple were going. Rocky was flying out of Kansas City with his dad. Me and Colton Hawks are flying out of St. Louis. For some reason, they booked me and Colton on a later flight from St. Louis to Chicago than they did to the coaches, and flights were getting delayed all day that day. So we, our flight was getting delayed, theirs was getting delayed, and came down to it, like, Colton and Keegan, like, your guys are going to miss your connecting flight from Chicago to Germany. And we're like, we don't know what to do. <laughs> and we're alone at the airport. Smith and Maple are already in Chicago. And so we called USA Wrestling. We're like, hey, um, they're saying that we're going to miss our flight from Chicago to Germany. What, what should we do? And they're like, oh, they'll fix it. Like, just don't worry about it. Like, your flight in Germany will probably be delayed. Or your flight from Chicago to Germany will probably, probably be delayed. And I'm like, okay. We get called up to the front desk, and this lady who's working for United Airlines is like, yeah, you know you guys are going to miss your flight. Um, from Chicago to Germany, and we're like, uh, we were we're part of Team USA. Like we were told that flight's delayed, and she's like, no, the plane's there right now. I'm like, well, what do we do? Like, we don't know what we're doing. We didn't book the flights. We didn't do anything. And they're like, oh, we'll put you from St. Louis to Houston, Houston to Germany, and you'll meet up with them in Germany. And I was like, just me and Colton by ourselves. Like. We don't know how to navigate our way through the German airport. Like, and we were arriving there like four hours later. Like, we're cutting our like, layover time by a lot from Germany to Moscow. And we were like, all right. So we fly from St. Louis to Houston. Houston to Germany. There was no one on that flight. We had like four seats. It was like 12 hours. Um, slept most of the way. And we got to Germany. And my phone's not working. Like, I don't know. Like, I just didn't. My international plan was just being terrible Colton's phone's working and Colton's like texting Smith and Smith's like all right you got to get on the train you got to come to here and we're we're like we don't we don't we can't read the signs like if they're in German <laughs> so we go like we try to find someone to help us and like we're showing these passport to these these officials or whatever and we're like we all we saw was like transit so we're like train perfect we need to find that so we go and uh we give them our passport, and they're like, uh, yeah, you guys have a connecting flight to Moscow. Like, where are you going? I'm like, we don't know. Like, train, like, we need to find the train to a different terminal. And they're like, yeah, like, this is the train to leave the airport and get into the city of Frankfurt. And we're like, oh, that's not where we want to go. Like, where do we go? It's like, oh, you go up there. And so we hustled up there. We found them. And five minutes before they started boarding, we found them. All of Team USA is right there. We're like, oh, thank goodness we found it. So and then another really long flight from Germany to Moscow. And then another flight from Moscow to Ufa, and that was hilarious. Like when we got from when we got to the Moscow airport, like probably the most inefficient, giant packed airport I've ever been to. Like, oh my God, there were so many people, and our flight was at whatever time, and we were going to be late. Like, no chance we were making that flight because the way that it was taking forever to get through customs and stuff. So, Maple's like, "All right, I'm sprinting." This dude takes off like just run running through the airport gets there he held the plane there for probably 10 to 15 minutes just like being like don't worry they're coming like making small talk and we finally made it and i remember we were sweating terrified and we stepped on the bus to drive to the plane and coach kj we get in the bus and we're like we made it guys we're here like blah, blah blah we're like yeah let's go and everyone like all the russians are like what are you guys like screaming about and then they realize like usa like oh sportsmen like good luck so they were they were awesome, and then we get to we get to Russia, and it might have been the coolest experience ever. Like I had never heard of this place, but Ufa, Russia, man, awesome, great stores, great great city, giant. Um, everyone was super friendly. Um, I don't even know. Like there were great shopping centers. You know, there was like places we could go hang out if we wanted to. Um, I brought my skateboard over there, so you know I had to take some videos of me skating in Russia. Um, and then getting to the tournament, uh, we got there on like the 13th or something and, I, or we got there the 14th maybe, cause it was like a full two days of travel. And I think we wrestled on the, the 17th and 18th or something like that, or maybe the 19th. But I remember just getting to the arena and just being like soaking everything and just like take this experience as it is. Don't, doesn't matter like how you do Like you're trying to win gold, but don't make it a huge deal. Um, 
and I get to the tournament and, you know, we do our warm up, getting everything down the way, you know, trying to acclimate to the sleep. And I never did. Like I woke up at 2 a.m. every single day, just like couldn't fall back asleep. So I'm like, all right, well, you're going to have to wrestle probably tired and sleep deprived. But, you know, you can't complain about it. This is your one opportunity to wrestle overseas and you can't make excuses. So got down to weight, made weight. That was the second day. So I looking at the brackets, I had no clue. I don't didn't know any of these guys. And I had apparently had a really bad draw, really tough draw with, you know, the Azerbaijan Taran Ramov, who wrestled in the Olympics a couple months prior and had a really close match with, you know, Frank Chimizo, multiple time world medalist. And I didn't know that. And, you know, I went through my first match, quick tech, second match. Um, Coach Smith are like, yeah, this guy does nothing. Like he's a typical foreigner wrestler. Like he's really good positionally, but, you know, I just put it on him. I was like, all right, cool. Man, uh, that dude might have been the most difficult guy I've ever wrestled in my life. Like, super hard right leg lead you know grabbing two on ones took me down twice right away super easy and i was like shit like this kid's good like it was one time in my life where i'm like i don't know what to do like the second period i'm like screw it i'm just gonna hand fight him and just make crap happen like i know he's gonna get tired he was already getting a little bit tired at the end of the first but i'm like you know you can wrestle just wrestle hard and uh just started putting the pace on him pulling on his head more you know, he was baiting me in to shoot a really hard single so we could limp leg, but I'm like, all right, if you're going to shoot that single, make sure you cap above the knee. Sure enough, about a minute and a half into the second period, shot that single, was coming up to finish it. He shin wizard. I threw my shin over the, or threw my heel in on the far side, turned in, slapped my favorite move, cradle, pin, went crazy. I was like, man, I just pinned an Olympian. That's pretty badass. Um, and then I'm like, all right, well, you know, you can be on, you can be happy for a couple minutes, but you know, you got the Russian now and you know, Russia's always good. So going into that match with Russia, uh, I was in Russian territory. You know, I am very, very, uh, not the favorite, you know, for the fans aspect. And there was still wasn't that many people there just cause of COVID. But I just remember this guy coming out and they're like, Russia, Russia. They're all cheering against me. And I was like, this is awesome. Like, I love being cheered against. Like, I love the hate. Like, I love, not it was hate, but it was just like, I love being the underdog. I love being, you know, the one that's, you know, people don't want to win. And going in that match, uh, it was tricky. I've never wrestled guys like that. Like, they're, they definitely wrestle a lot different. And I got down early. I did something really stupid. I put myself in a cradle just like I did back at NCAAs my freshman year. So I'm like, how many times do I got to learn that lesson? Don't put yourself in a cradle. And so I, I'm down 8-3 going in the break, but I'm like, I got this. Like, I literally walked to the corner. I'm like, that was so stupid what I did. And Maple's like, yeah, that wasn't very good, but, you know, you got to come back now. And I was like, all right. I'm like, I'm just going to put the pace on him. You know, got a quick takedown right away, and I knew he was feeling it. Like, he was taking a while to get back to the center. And gave up another stupid takedown, and I'm down 10-5 with, like, 90 seconds to go. And I'm like, shot my favorite outside step high crotch picked it up he's quad pod and you know they don't know folk style so i slapped a folk style cradle on him pinned him went crazy i could hear smith oh man i i remember immediately i could hear him just from the stands i i had the single leg i pulled him in he went to a quad pod i threw the leg in he saw me lock my hands and the angle he had was perfect and he was like you got it you got it i heard maple go bring your leg out and go I've never done this to this day, ever in my entire life. I had a cradle locked up, and usually I'll just step up one foot, pick him up. I deadlifted this dude all the way up in the air, yanked him all the way back in bounds and got the pin. And I remember going up, I just, that was, that was so awesome. You know, the Russian coaches wouldn't even shake my hand. They were so pissed off. And uh, I was like, man, this is awesome. And everyone back home, like my dad was texting me because my dad works at a military base. Um, so you, you can know they're probably very passionate about the USA. And my dad was like, man, all the guys were there, like, they were so pumped, like, you just beat the Russian, like, you know, just pride for the country, which was cool. I'd never experienced something like that, you know, more than just wrestling, just the pride for being, you know, representing the USA. And so, uh, you know, went back, cut my weight, made weight the next day, and sat all day for the finals. And I got to watch Braxton Amos win a gold medal, got to watch Bo Bartlett take a bronze, and it was awesome. And, you know, I just remember getting ready for this finals and Ben, you know, Ben was along the whole time, even though he wasn't there. Um, contacting Smith, contacting me the whole time, being like, hey, this guy does this. I specifically remember before my finals, Ben was like, hey, this kid uh, has a really good head in between leg lace, you know, so if you get taken down, make sure you're aware of that. And he doesn't really do much. He just fakes pretty hard. And I remember going to that match and I was just feeling good. 
I was like, man, this is awesome. I got the red USA singlet on and went out, tech this dude, won a world title. And pretty much it. It was amazing. And then made my little bet with Maple and uh, looked at him. First thing I said to him, walked over to him. I was like, you ready to strap on your shoes now? And he laughed at me, gave him a big hug, you know, ran around the mat with the flag, which was, it was like, it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a surreal experience to where I almost started crying, but it was like a, wow, like I've seen so many people. I watched Jordan Burroughs do this in 2012. Like I'm the one doing this right now. Like, oh my gosh, like I want to do this again. Like I got to keep winning world titles so I could do this. So it was awesome.